Max, uh, another mineral, one, in fact, one that we hear an awful lot about is iron. What can you tell us about iron? Well, you know, iron in the uh, studies of the U.S. population, and actually uh, data from around the world, is the most often deficient mineral in the diet. Uh, the iron uh, has a very, very important effect. It's involved in all red cell production, production of hemoglobin, so it's important to the blood's ability to deliver oxygen to all of your body tissues. So it's a, a critical, critical mineral and one that uh, we really need to make sure that we're getting enough of. Uh, people in this country have heard some uh, horror stories about too much iron. And uh, I've talked to a number of uh, researchers about this. In particular, Dr. De Silvestro at Ohio State, I had uh, uh, him write an article about this fear. And what he has found in his clinical research is that really uh, it's very difficult to get the amount of iron that's going to be damaging to you or I unless we have this genetic disease called hemosiderosis. And in those people, they don't handle iron properly. And because of that, they get excessive iron stores and things such as that that can be very, very dangerous, uh, damage your liver and that. Uh, if you don't have the hemosiderosis in your family, you probably don't have to be fearful of that. But luckily today, if you really were worried about it, they have blood tests that will tell you whether you have this problem or not. And if you're really concerned, uh, go talk to your doctor. Mm -hmm. There are people, uh, women especially, who have some higher needs for, for iron. And uh, as you were mentioning, the, the situation about uh, the fear of iron, uh, in some cases we've seen some perhaps misguided uh, feelings where products designed for women actually didn't contain iron, particularly women in the, in the childbearing years or right. even, even pregnant women. And that well, yeah. seems, as you said, to be doesn't make a lot of sense. Right, and you know, the iron needs of people vary, you know, during their age span, especially mm -hmm. in women. Of course, any children of uh, rapid growth stages mm -hmm. need iron. It's a critical need. Uh, having anemia when you're newborn and things such as that can have a major impact on your development, a very, very huge impact mm -hmm. for the rest of your life mm -hmm. uh, because it's important to CNS development, things such as that. Uh, and if you don't have proper neurological development early on, you really, really can develop some problems and not have the uh, learning potential that you should have and things such as that. So child, children, uh, people that are growing uh, should be uh, getting enough iron. Uh, certainly women who are of childbearing age who have, you know, of course, menstrual flow and things such as this, uh, will lose and turn over more iron. So they really should make sure that they're getting enough iron. Uh, women, of course, during pregnancy and lactation, breastfeeding, uh, need to be getting enough uh, iron as well. Those people in particular really, uh, for the most part, unless they truly have this hemosiderosis uh, problem, uh, should really consider taking an iron supplement and take a nice modest dose of iron every day. Uh, taking 10 to 15 milligrams of iron uh, during those stages of the woman's life is certainly a, a decent recommendation and a safe one. Now, obviously, iron is uh, in our diet, particularly in things such as red meat mm -hmm. and so on, but uh, either vegetarians or people who are cutting back today on, on their intake of red meat then may need to look at another uh, a supplemental source of iron. Uh, there are a lot of different sources out there, but can you speak a little bit about that? And of course, sure. the chelate iron sure. as well. Well, you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, iron is one of the biggest uh, percentage uh, deficiencies in terms of the populace that is uh, deficient. Uh, typical iron salts like ferrous sulfate are not as well absorbed as the iron you'd have in meat. And what we found is that the iron in meat is naturally chelated in the meat. And the iron in meat is very, very well absorbed, much better absorbed than the iron that you would get in something like a vegetable, like spinach, which has a very low bioavailability or poor absorption. Uh, the Albion iron is a iron glycine chelate. Uh, it is basically mimics the way you would get your iron in meat uh, in this chelated fashion. 
and uh, the absorption is therefore uh, better, like it would be mm -hmm. from meat, from cow or pork or chicken. Uh, so the chelated form is the, the best form to go in terms of supplementation, and it just so happens that it mimics the way we have the iron present in our, our meat, naturally. And again, uh, the final uh, question uh, with iron has to do with safety. The RDI is 18 milligrams per day for adults. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, are there, are there issues or concerns if you were to take more than that? Well, there, there could be. But truthfully, if you're taking uh, the chelated form that Albion produces, the danger is really, really reduced because what you find, and we've done clinical studies on this when we were obtaining our uh, grass, generally regarded as safe uh, rating of Ferrocal, uh, which is the trade name for this iron glycine chelate, uh, that the better your body's balance of iron, in other words, the more your hemoglobin and uh, hematocrit levels are and your storage forms of iron are, the lower the amount of the iron as a chelate will be absorbed in kind of a natural protective mechanism. But if you take uh, inorganic forms, you can run into trouble, more so than you would with the chelate. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't like people to take much more than 30 milligrams a day without a doctor prescription. Okay. Thank you, Max.